And indeed the seat, if you like, of the House of Windsor, um, and therefore one of these places where people can come and, and, and really reflect on these past 70 years. Well, indeed, Mark, and for the past two and a half years, this has been home to Her Majesty. It was her final home, it turns out. This is where she's lived for the past two and a half years during the coronavirus pandemic, as you so rightly say. This is where she chose to live. This is where she situated her small and trusted uh, members of staff, which became known as HMS Bubble during coronavirus lockdown. It's where she spent her last wedding anniversary with her beloved Duke of Edinburgh, their seven 73rd. That was in November 2020. And it was from here, Windsor Castle, where she left in July, went up to Balmoral, as she always does that time of year, uh, to spend her summer holidays. And she was due back here in October. So very much felt like a resident here of Windsor. And, and speaking to people here, it feels like a loss to the community here. She was a regular face that would be seen in the grounds of Windsor, on the Windsor Estate, walking her corgis or in her Land Rover. So it's very uh, visceral emotion being seen by the residents of Windsor. You might not even be able to make out the hundreds and thousands of bouquets and that are behind me just uh, lying by the gates of Windsor Castle. They are building up in their hundreds by the hour. Um, but it really has been such an emotional morning here. I want to bring in now uh, Richard Mobbs, who's just joined me now wearing a magnificent Union Jack uh, around his shoulders. Richard, thank you so much for joining me. So you've come down to Windsor today. Tell me what you make of the scene. Well, it's unbelievable, really. All the flowers, all the people. Now the children have come out of school. Little children laying flowers. It's quite uh, spectacular, really. Mm. Really is spectacular to see this outpouring of grief. Mm. Where were you yesterday when you heard the news and what was your instant reaction? Well, I was at home in Leicester. Um, we heard on the news that the Queen wasn't very well, you know, and then the family were going up there. So at that point we thought, well, there's got to be something quite serious. So we were sort of prepared a bit for what we heard later on. And you're, you're from Leicester, you've come down to Windsor. Why did you decide to make that move? Well, we came down originally to watch the polo, because we were following the polo and we always see the Queen quite a bit. Mm. Obviously that's been cancelled, so we thought, well, well, we like Windsor, so we will come to Windsor and soak up the atmosphere and pay our respects. Because we are in a moment of, of history, aren't we? Mm. And Richard, I did want to ask you, because you have met Her Majesty on, on a multitude of occasions, what was your impression of her? Well, I've seen her quite a few times, yeah. Um, yeah, she's just a pleasant, sort of down-to-earth sort of lady, really, you know, friendly and you respect her and gives her presence when she enters a room, you know, and it's sort of somewhere one-off, really. A one-off and, and truly uh, the great. What are you making of people saying that she should be known as Elizabeth the Great? Oh, well, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, it's probably Elizabeth the Great, but I'm quite happy with just Elizabeth. <laughs> You're quite happy with Elizabeth. How do you feel then about King Charles III? How does that sound to you? Well, barring the dogs, yes, it's, um, it's a good name, isn't it? King Charles III, it's a nice historic name, isn't it? Mm. So... Uh, Something we'll have to get used to, though, saying king instead of queen. What do you think he'll make as a king? Do you think he'd make a good one? He's had a good apprenticeship, hasn't he? So hopefully he'll do a good job, you know, and uh, just carry on.